Welcome back to Old School Sports and our play of the Miami Marlins in Out of the Park Baseball 22. We're at the early stages of the offseason with the Marlins, and we've been taking a look at our players eligible for salary arbitration, and we've made a few moves. We've offered a couple of players longer-term contracts, and we've traded away a couple of players that uh, we don't believe have futures with the team for players that we believe may fit us a little better. Uh, we've also decided to um, decline our team options on Jake Marisnik, making him a free agent. And we declined our $7 million team option on Adam Duvall. He's now eligible for arbitration uh, in the wake of that at a price of about $2.9 million. Uh, so we're still considering whether we'd like to bring him back at that price, but obviously good that we didn't bring him back at the $7 million figure. And we did actually exercise our team option on our starting shortstop. So after making those moves and kind of limiting uh, what we are going to be paying next year, we've opened up a situation where we've got about 22 million plus for free agents and about 18 million plus for extensions. So the first things we're going to do is start working on our plan for next season. Uh, I think we're still going to have pretty meager fan interest next season. We're a losing baseball team without a lot of stars. Hopefully we will be able to bring in a couple of more popular players through free agency to kind of boost that fan interest. But until that happens um, over the long term, I think we're still going to struggle to get people into the seats. I mentioned in our last episode that our owner wants us to increase attendance over the next couple of years. So we're going to cut the ticket price just a bit more for the 2022 season down to $13.50 from the $14 it is today, which will hopefully sell us a few more season tickets and at least push average attendance up over $20,000. And hopefully when everything is um, offset, we'll, we'll have more revenue per game than we do today. We're also going to bump up our scouting budget uh, a little bit. It was seven and a half million last year. We're gonna push it up to eight million dollars for 2022. And we're also gonna try to increase our player development budget modestly, um, adding another 500,000 in there to push it up to 18 million, uh, sorry, 13 million. And we're going to increase our draft budget to 88.5 million dollars to hopefully compensate for the uh, expected draft slot amounts of the players will be drafting next July. Keep the international free agent budget at $5 million. So at this point, we uh, will have roughly $21 million to spend in free agency, close to $17 million for extensions after kind of making the changes to our, our finances for next season. It so we're we're feeling pretty good about things now. I think it's time to go through the the salary arbitration process. Um, not too many people wanted to negotiate with us all that much. So um, I know there's a, a school of thought that you don't want to offend players. And if, for instance, the recommended uh, figure for Sandy Alcantara is you know 1.365 million, and he's asking for say 1.8 million give the players that you want to keep around the 1.8 to keep them happy. That being said, when you look at the fact we've got about a dozen players uh, up for arbitration, the extra couple hundred thousand dollars per player, and in the, the cases of some players like Brian Anderson, it could definitely be a, a seven-figure difference between what he's asking for and what we're thinking will settle the arbitration, that could end up costing us as a team several more million dollars, which really at this point brings in an extra starter for us. So given that there's no one on this list that's an absolute player that we can't live without, and if they get a little upset with us, hopefully it will uh, be eased over time by a more successful and winning team, we're going to be willing to upset a few people in arbitration with the thought that that will hopefully on balance, give us several million dollars more to use in free agency uh, this offseason when all is said and done. So that is the plan for now, and we're going to start uh, hitting the free agent market shortly.
So it's ended up being quite a busy off season, although we haven't necessarily done as much as we would have hoped to. Made three kind of key signings. Uh, David Robertson is our closer. Uh, obviously, he's got a lot better stuff. Uh, strong movement, good control. Veteran, he's fragile. He's not going to be with us a long time, but a contract of uh, $2.5 million a year for each of the next two years for essentially his age 37 and 38 seasons was reasonable as far as we were concerned, and he was the first signing we made. And then we also signed uh, a pair of catchers. Buster Posey needs no introduction, uh, meets our owner's request for us to sign a gold glover, which will help and he has still strong catcher ability, very good arm, a lot of wonderful intangibles, and he's a decent average catcher hitter at this point. And then we also signed OOTP favorite Austin Hedges as a catcher also. Obviously one of the best, if not the best, defensive catchers in the game with, similar to Posey, very strong characteristics in the clubhouse. So we improved our team on those fronts. That being said, we still have a lot of money left. We've still got about 18, close to $19 million for free agents. We've been in discussions with a number of free agent pitchers, uh, notably the top three out there at this point. James Paxton, Noah Syndergaard, and Justin Verlander, who all remain unsigned. They all claim they have better deals than we've offered from other teams, but they haven't actually signed anywhere yet. So in the coming days, we will continue to look at those uh, players and maybe be able to come to an agreement with one of them to really bolster the front end of our rotation for this season. And then we also have a couple of players that we signed to minor league contracts that will likely turn into major league contracts in the coming days. Uh, notably, uh, we signed uh, left-hander Chasen Shreve, the relief pitcher, to a minor league contact that will become a major league contact if he is on our uh, on our team at the start of the season, which he likely will be. And then more recently, we assigned uh, Jonathan VR as a potential utility infielder for us to kind of uh, back up at uh, second base and shortstop and um, you know potentially play a little bit of center field for us too, which is a gap that we haven't completely filled. So the good news is we've got a lot of cash and we've made some incremental improvements to our team on the margins. The bad news is that we've gone through the entire offseason now and we still haven't uh, signed a big fish. But we have money to do so and the other thing that we will be working on in the early days of the 2022 season is perhaps trying to make a trade with uh, one of our competitors to get someone who's on the trading block. As I mentioned, center fielder still remains a weakness for us. And Manuel Margot of the Tampa Bay Rays is on the trade block right now. His salary is $9 million, which uh, is manageable for us at this point. And we may be able to get uh, Tampa to pay some of that, depending on how eager they are to get rid of him. But would obviously be a average hitter with great defensive characteristics there in center field. So that would be a good add. So we're going to continue trying to bolster the team in the opening days of the 2022 season. Well, we figured out our 26-man roster for the beginning of the season. Uh, the big changes are at catcher, where, as I mentioned, we had picked up Austin Hedges and Buster Posey, and we decided to uh, DFA Jonathan LaCroix, who we picked up a year ago. We also have added uh, Matt Thace and A.J. Pollock in separate trades with the Dodgers in the beginning of the offseason where we uh, traded away some players that were 
in salary arbitration that we didn't really want to make offers to. So they're two new additions to the team. And then I mentioned earlier, Jonathan VR as a utility infielder. He's actually going to be our starting center fielder for the first couple of days of the season until Monty Harrison gets back from his suspension. But that is clearly a position that we will be looking to upgrade over the near term, given the amount of cash that we have. And then looking at our pitching rotation, uh, four of the same five starters as last year. And then we brought up uh, Sixto Sanchez, who had a very good year at Jacksonville last season and did okay in a few starts with us last year. And then the other big additions, which I've mentioned through the free agency, are David Robertson, who's going to slot in right as our closer, and then Chasen Shreve as a lefty specialist out of the bullpen, giving us uh, three lefty arms, which is better than the two we had a year ago, but we would still look to add another lefty arm through trades or free agency. So I think we're positioned reasonably well, not that we've made huge improvements to our roster, but the big difference is that right now we've got over $20 million in money that we can still use to sign some of the remaining free agents in the early stages of the season and then also use it to take on contracts as we potentially trade for people to fill some of the holes in our lineup over the coming months. So cautiously optimistic that we can be better than we were a year ago. Again, that's not too hard. We only won 65 games. But the goal is certainly to get into the mid-70s this year and then hopefully get close to 500 even if we, if we make some moves. We will see how it goes. Thanks for listening and look forward to seeing you with uh, installment number four soon.